But we needed to do a good job in finding a president to lead our university. And I will just have to say, we've done an exceptional job. Let me introduce to you Dr. Lori Nichols, the new president of the University of Wyoming. Well, thank you very much, Mel. And I just want to say thank you for your service to the University of Wyoming and to the state uh, by serving as a trustee. I, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Mel right away when I interviewed, and um, I could tell that he was a keeper and just really a wonderful <laughs> asset to the university. So thank you for hosting me here today. I want to say thank you for coming this morning. I know we're hitting you on a Wednesday morning, and you probably have other things that you could be doing. So thanks for taking a, a little bit of time for, for your day to be here today. Um, I am delighted to be in Wyoming. I'm delighted to be the 26th president of the University of Wyoming. It's such an incredible opportunity for me. And uh, even though it's been a little bit of a challenging start, as Mel said, there's no question in my mind but what I, I made the right decision uh, when I came here and there are so many opportunities and I'm really excited to get after them. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I, uh, and some of you maybe have read about me and perhaps a few of you have not, but I am a South Dakota native and so I grew up in the state next door and I have to tell you that there are so many similarities between South Dakota and Wyoming, it's amazing. Almost every day something happens and I think, oh my gosh, this, is South, this feels just like South Dakota. So, uh, and I think one of the things that's so wonderful about it is that really both states are primarily rural states. Uh, they're sparsely populated, really, when you think about sort of the total picture of the United States. A lot of them really were, were agricultural-based states to a large extent. And I just want to comment that as I'm here in the Star Valley, I can see the influence of agriculture here, and I feel like I'm home. So that's really a wonderful part for me, is just getting in touch with the state and understanding what makes this state tick, and I know that agriculture is a big part of that as well. So I grew up there, I grew up on a farm, I, and my, my father had a diversified family farm. We raised cattle, we also did corn and soybeans and all kinds of other things, but I grew up really understanding sort of hard work of agriculture, and I, I, at the time I didn't really understand what a wonderful asset that would be to me, but today I feel like so much of my work ethic comes from kind of those farm roots, and getting up every morning and taking care of the chores and doing all those things that farm kids do. And, uh, and my family is still on the farm, so it's, it's a multi-generational farm. I went to my land-grant university in South Dakota, which was South Dakota State University, and it was really there that I fell in love with land-grant universities. I really came to appreciate the fact that they were the access point to higher education for the state, for the citizens of the state, and that they attracted an awful lot of first-generation college students, and I was one of them, because my parents didn't have the opportunity to go to school. So that first generation that was sort of forging ahead and going to college is really a, a huge part of what a land-grant university does, and I love that, partly because I was one of those people, and I could see how it was opening opportunities for me that I probably would not have if I didn't go to college and if I didn't get that college degree. So I trained to be a teacher, and I thought that I was going to be a high school teacher, and then I wanted to be a principal and a superintendent. That was sort of my goal in life as I moved forward. And I taught in Hill City, South Dakota, so in the Black Hills area, and then I went to Denver, and I taught in the Denver public school system just to get a little bit of a larger school perspective. But along the way, I had the opportunity to do a master's degree at Colorado State, and then I sort of took a little bit of a right turn and I uh, went to Wayne State College and I tried my hand in college teaching and I fell in love with it. I loved working with college students and I really just loved the opportunity to be that gateway of higher education for students and I never went back. After that I did my PhD at Ohio State and I did my first faculty experience at the University of Idaho, another land grant university and then eventually made my way back to my alma mater, South Dakota State, where I spent the last 22 years as a dean, and now most recently as the provost at that university. So uh, I've had the opportunity to be at five land-grant universities, and every one of them has reaffirmed for me how much I love land-grant universities. So when the University of Wyoming's presidency opened, my president, David Chequin, walked into my office, set the job announcement down and said, you need to apply for this. Mm -hmm. And he knew me. I mean, he knew that I was kind of a farm kid. He knew that I loved this part of the country broadly. 
and that I probably wanted to stay more or less in this region of the United States. He knew that I loved land grants, and I think he just knew the University of Wyoming would be a wonderful fit for me. So I threw my application in, and I'm delighted now to be here today. So let me just talk for a few minutes about what I see at the University of Wyoming. I see it as being, of course, the, the, the land grant university for this state, and of course you're so unique because it's the only four-year uh, university in the state. Uh, such an asset, by the way. But it puts an awful lot on the university to really be a strong university and serve the entire state, and I see that. So while it's a wonderful asset, it also is a great responsibility that we bear and that it's on us at the university to do a terrific job of serving the state, and I'm very committed to that as I move forward. I, I do see it as being the access point for a higher education for many citizens in Wyoming, and even today, the University of Wyoming attracts a large number of first-generation college students just like I was. I think the percentage is between 30 to 40 percent that come to the university are the first in their family to go on to college, and so I know that's a great responsibility that we bear as well, and I am very committed to working with students. Student success has really been my hallmark of administration, and I'm really excited to continue that as we move forward as well. But having said that, I want to say that Wyoming is also very blessed in that you have an incredible community college system in this state, something I am not familiar with because South Dakota didn't have anything like this. So this is new for me and it's something that I need to learn as I come here and begin my presidency at the university. And thus, as I've gone across the state, one of the priorities has been to get to the communities that in fact have a community college and I've been trying to spend a significant part of my visits there actually in the community college, meeting with the president and the faculty and the administration and learning about each of those community colleges and how they're different and how they're alike in many ways. And most importantly, what the relationship between those community colleges and the university needs to be as we move forward. So uh, it's a time of learning for me and a great commitment to strengthening that relationship and making sure that as we work with those community colleges and particularly the students, that they can come to the university for a four-year degree if they wish and that we make that transfer process just as seamless as we can for them. I think there's also a lot of opportunity just to look at academic programs and where we fit and maybe areas where we should fit that we don't right now. So also kind of that articulation and that match I think is a major part of what we need to do as, as we move forward as well. So much work to be done there, but certainly I'm on it, and uh, part of my summer is getting to every community college, meeting the president, meeting the faculty and staff, and making sure that we're doing a really good job there. Having said that, I just want to say thank you so much to the, uh, the, to the public school uh, administration that is here today, because I also want to say that I think strengthening our relationship with the K-12 system is a big part of going forward too. I know much of the future of the University of Wyoming is going to be dependent on our ability to attract the very best students we can from Wyoming to come to the University of Wyoming and bring those transfer students from the community colleges too. And if we don't do a good job on both fronts, the university will not thrive and we need to thrive. So I know that that's a big piece of it and we wanna make sure that we're talking with the schools to see what more we can do to be a very attractive uh, force to the, to the high school students in this community as well. So those are just some initial thoughts that are on my mind as I come, based on my experience of where I've been as well as just what I'm learning as I get out across the state. I've been here about a month and a half now. Uh, I have been spending about two days out of every week getting out in the state, and I've been doing a pretty good job. I've gotten to many communities, and I'll go to more as I move forward into July. Uh, and it's been a wonderful part of my beginning here. In fact, there's some days when, you know, working through the budget cuts and whatnot on campus get, get a little hard. And I'll tell you what, getting those few days when I can get out into a community and meet people like you and talk about the university, it lifts me up so much. So this is a little bit of my mental therapy as well as I go through the <laughs> summer. But it's been very, very good for me and I'm learning. And I really do want to hear from you in terms of how we're doing. You know, what you see the university doing well and where you think we should improve. So that's a lot of this, is just intake for me so that I can start getting some of these in my, things in my head so we can go back and start really working on those as we move forward. So let me just say a few words about our budget because it is on a lot of people's minds and I know it's been in the press a lot. Uh, I, it is true that we did work our way and there's a few legislators in the room so you'll know this well, 
but we worked our way first of all through the penny plan which was the percent and a half budget cut that came early on right after the legislative session and quite honestly the university really had that done before I came um, and I was grateful for that but then the 8% or it's actually 8.4% budget cut that we received which was 35 million dollars came just a week before I arrived and so that piece I have been working on pretty hard as I got here um, it, you'll laugh at this but I started on a Monday morning and literally I had gotten there and was carrying some boxes into my office and our vice president for administration and budget came down to my office and met me about eight o'clock in the morning and said would you like to be briefed on the budget and I kind of looked at him and went sure go yeah come on in let's do it and so he told me about the 35 million and I said well Bill where are we at with it and he said Lori we were waiting for you to come so <laughs> I went, okay <laughs> well guess what I'm gonna do this week <laughs> so I really did that night I stayed at the office till late and I just really on the computer started pounding out more or less conceptually a plan for how we might address this because we had six weeks to get about 20 million dollars figured out and so that's a short time so I just kind of tried to hit it and then started working with the campus as we moved forward to see what we could get done in that time period so we have identified some budget cuts for FY17 that actually starts now in a couple days uh, but we have more work ahead of us we need to figure out more budget cuts for FY18 but now the beauty is we have a year or so to work through that so we have a committee working away and we'll, we'll work through it uh, but, but I'm glad we have more time so we can be a little bit more thoughtful as we move forward um, there, there's been a, a variety of strategies that we've used as we've worked on our budget cut probably the biggie is that we were sitting on 70 vacancies at that time that Monday as I started working on it and I really just lifted those seven, 70 vacancies because I knew I could not hit 20 million dollars unless we, we did some pretty significant down um, downsizing in terms of the staffing at the university and so we took those 70 positions and we eliminated them so that is really a major way that we got started with it now I know that that's not the most strategic and I know some of those positions probably do need to come back because they probably weren't the right position to eliminate but we have the time now to start doing that shifting as we move forward so as we get more vacancies we might actually go back and replace a few of those that we really do need to replace because they weren't the right positions to cut and we'll do that in fact we've already started looking at some of that as we move forward we also did open up a retirement incentive plan to see if we could give faculty and staff that have been at the university quite a long time and really are right up against their retirement just an incentive and a way to kind of off ramp it to, and to move into their retirement and we are really working hard on that right now on campus that just rolled out about a week ago and we have a lot of uh, advising counseling sessions and so forth on campus going but there's no question but what in order to meet a 35 million dollar reduction that we will have to downsize the staff at the university and we're, we're working away at that right now as we move forward I do want to say that as I came to the presidency or as I was, was beginning to, to work up think about it and move into the presidency what I really had hoped to do and I'm still committed to doing is to work very hard on a strategic plan for the university kind of give a roadmap to the university for the next five years or so and paint a really a, a positive picture about really where we're going and I'm not losing sight of that in fact I think it's probably more important than ever to do that now as we are working on downsizing our budget so even as we speak we're putting in place some of the beginning steps to start a strategic plan and you better believe just because of who I am student success is going to be front and center in our next strategic plan at both the undergraduate and graduate level but you'll see a big strong focus at the undergraduate level because I just think it's so critical to this state and it's so important to the young people in the state to provide them that really great education that for me open the door to opportunity for many of you open the door to opportunity and we want to continue that for our next generation of students and of citizens of the state and so we will work that hard as we do our next strategic plan for the university I'm very excited to get after that as well I'll just say a couple more things and then I'd be happy to open it up if you have any questions but I just want to mention to you very quickly that despite the fact that we can get kind of bogged down in the budget and sort of the oh woe is me kind of uh, uh, communication that often goes on there are three things three initiatives happening on campus that I think are so exciting and we're continuing to drive these we're not going to let up one bit 
and one of those is the Tier 1 Engineering Initiative, and you've probably heard about some of these, but that is an effort that started several years ago to take the engineering programs to the next level of excellence, including building a beautiful new engineering building, which is going to be a game changer for that college. And so that we will continue to move forward and drive. We also have a science initiative, which is an in initiative that, of course, I get excited about because this is about undergraduate education. But it really it takes the science, the teaching of science on campus in probably five broad areas, uh, things like biology and chemistry and botany and so on and so forth. And it really changes the way we teach undergraduates, much more active learning, different kinds of classrooms, more hands-on, uh, the type of learning you would hope students would be able to have. And so we're working hard at that as well, and we opened a beautiful new NZ Science building this year that really helps drive that as well. And then finally, the third is our education initiative, and I've already talked to a few of you today about teacher education. Of course, you know that's my background, and that's something that's near and dear to my heart, but I do know we've got work to do on teacher education to improve it, and I know part of that is making sure that we're having our student teachers reach a much broader area in the state than they are currently, and then making sure that we're getting those teachers placed into jobs throughout the state. I know that's very, very important, and so we'll work hard as we get that initiative launched and off the ground as well. So that's not all we're doing, but I think three kind of focus priority areas that have been identified quite honestly before I came, but are wonderful fits with the mission of the university, certainly fit, I think, the state, and we will keep driving those hard. You'll see those in our strategic plan. They'll come out loud and clear as, as we put that out there in the next year or so. So I think with that, I will uh, just end and say again, thank you for being here today. You have the most beautiful little part of the state I have seen. I couldn't believe it when we arrived yesterday <coughs> afternoon. You kind of, you feel like you're in God's country. It's just absolutely beautiful here. You are. So, yeah, I am. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to come back and just do fun things when I'm here, like the recreational stuff when I come back, because this is a wonderful place to explore. So I really look forward to that. I did mention my family. My husband is, is uh, dean of the Honors College at South Dakota State, so he's in higher ed as well. And he's wrapping up his job there this month in July, and he'll be joining me in August 1. So he'll be on campus soon. He doesn't have an official job, but I've already given him many jobs, so he'll be busy. <laughs> I call him every night and say, Tim, I've got another job for you, so I think he's overwhelmed. But he'll be a wonderful asset. He loves working with students, too. Um, and then we have two daughters. So our oldest daughter, Jordan, just graduated from South Dakota State with an English major, and she's going on to graduate school at St. John's University, so she's going to be moving to the Manhattan area, big change for her, and pursuing a master's degree. And then our youngest daughter, Hannah, is going to be a junior at New Mexico State University, and she's a dance major. So I have these kind of two humanities kids, and they're delightful, and they're doing great, and they're sort of off doing their own things. So. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, you know, having a family kind of at this point.